On behalf of all of us, my name is Beasley saying so long. Uh, good enjoy your evening tonight. Right now, Brenda Parker, Matt Stage, and standing by with Ram Post Game Show, brought to you by your Alberta Ram Dealers. Winning Motor Trend Truck of the Year three times in a row, that had never been done before. Then again, neither had a 12-inch touchscreen or a 1,000 pound-feet of torque. Never been done before. It's just kind of our thing. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Flames Post Game Live, brought to you by your Alberta Ram dealers. And uh, welcome to the Stanley Cup playoffs. 1 0, the uh, final score here tonight. It uh, all comes from a power play goal in the first period, Elias Lindholm, and it uh, happens to be the difference in this hockey game. Tight checking the rest of the way. Special teams, a big part of this hockey game as well. Uh, welcome in, Matt Stage, and back on the Flames TV desk. And we were just talking, last time we did this was. Uh, when these two teams were meeting in the uh, in the playoffs, and uh, yet much different feel here this time around. What did you make of uh, the night? Yeah, just great to be in a building with with the atmosphere like tonight. Um, when we compare it to the bubble playoff series against Dallas, it's yeah. completely different. And um, the fans brought the energy, and you saw that first period. That was the difference in the hockey game. The Flames dominated that first half of that period, and. Um, pretty much the whole period got the power play goal they needed and um, you know that's the difference in the hockey it's playoff hockey yeah no question and then uh, hung on there at the end and maybe just you know a thought on on special teams and how much of a role it played in this game what what it looks like when you're playing so much either shorthanded power yeah, as you talked about in the second remission a lot of guys end up watching at different points if you're not on you know one special team or another but you know what about just the way that a game plays out like that when you have to spend so much time on special teams yeah it, it ruins the flow of the game really um you know you have your your special teams players the guys who kill penalties the guys who play on the power play and some guys do neither so when you have that many penalties like we saw in the second period, it just kind of ruined the flow of the game, uh, especially for the Flames who um, who were dominating that first period. So, uh, you know, but that, that's hockey. you got to adjust. And, um, and really, you know, it's all about details. You know, the game's all about details. Um, the winning goal, or the only goal in the game is a face-off. You know, Flames win a face-off, make a nice play there, and, and that's the difference in the hockey game. And um, both teams were dialed in on their penalty kill, and... Um, both teams are going to want to get their power play to, you know, chip in, and that was the difference for the Flames tonight, and that's what we're going to see for the rest of the series here. Well, as you describe it, let's uh, take a look at it. As we see Elias Lindholm in the background, uh, it's a little bit busier, uh, you'll notice, in the back hallways here. Uh, Scotiabank saddled them as uh, playoffs have arrived, but uh, here is the goal and the game-winning one at that, and it's uh, from Elias Lindholm. There you mentioned the face-off win, but uh, obviously just the three figureheads that have been so integral to this team all season. Too. Yeah, and um, they've been big all year, and they, they came out. The, the crowd is buzzing. The first, you know, I don't think Dallas had a shot until, what, past the 10-minute mark of the first period. Yep. So you get this goal, and it's just putting the puck on net off a face-off play, and I'm sure Ottinger would probably want that one back, but he settled in after that. But that's all they needed tonight. So it was a good, good goal and a big goal for the team. Uh, maybe just because we talked about it again in the second remission, but just as you arrive at the rank, you saw it today driving in. I saw it, but uh, the perspective of a player when you're coming in for a playoff game and knowing, you know, that it does get cranked up. I mean, we felt it as, as soon as the anthems were coming and, and just, you know, what that playoff atmosphere means to the guys and, and obviously how they fed on it. Yeah, well, driving in as a player, you, you feel the buzz in the city and you just see the jerseys around and, um, on your way to the rink, you feel that. But as a player, you're, you're coming to the rink and you got to be dialed in. You got to got to know your assignments for the game. Um, you go over them in the morning. You go over them um, before the game again. And um, you know, if you walk out into the hall here to do your warm up or play a little kickball in the back, you start hearing the fans and the crowd and the Go Flames Go chants. And we're going to hear it even more as the playoffs go on here. So um, you feel that energy, but you also have to keep it on the tracks and, and mentally make sure you're, you're dialed into your assignments because, you know, the difference tonight was a face-off play. And, you know, that one detail, that's the difference in the hockey game. And um, a mistake in any other area of the game can, can turn a series around. So uh, that's the mindset. And I know the coaching staff here with the Flames, we, we know Daryl, they're, they're going to be dialed in uh, every shift here. And we will uh, hear from Daryl Sutter and uh, a couple of select members of the Calgary Flames as this postgame show rolls along. Uh, also expecting to hear from uh, the head coach of the Dallas Stars, Rick Bonus, as well. Uh, maybe just a thought on, on when you can finish a game like this, uh, when, when the mistakes are, you know, at the highest end and yet so exposed, uh, but you find a way to do it. You find a way to, to put that one nothing victory away. What kind of confidence can that give you as a group, just going through that and, and finding a way out of it? 
Yeah, well, they closed out the game. They did what they needed to do. Um, you know, you got your, your first win of the series. You're up one nothing. and I need three more. And, yeah. um, you know, the Flames have proven all year they can win games anyway. Um, today was, you know, get that early goal and, and play some solid defense. They didn't give up much. And when they did, you know, Markstrom's there. And he's uh, one of the best in the league. So you can win games that way. They can score goals when they need to. And, uh, you know, I think it's a positive start for you know, for the team, first of all, you got the win. So for sure, it's a positive sure, start. But yeah. just the way they came out and uh, dominated that first period um, really shows how they can take control of games. And um, when you play with the lead, it's just natural to kind of play it a little safer. So, you know, they're comfortable yeah. having a one goal lead. And, and it showed there in the third. It's interesting. There's a few different stories lines to uh, to kind of dive into in terms of losing Rasmus Anderson. They lose John Klingberg. Uh, both at the end of the first period, you don't have, you know, two very important defensemen on either side of the puck. And, um, you know, but first, let's go back to Jacob Markstrom. You talk about him, uh, obviously gets the shutout. He had nine of them in the regular season. This is an important one. But uh, what do you like about him when you're you're seeing him go to work on a nightly basis? Well, he just brings that calmness to the team. You know, you know, your guy back there is going to make the saves when, when you need him to. And, um, you know, he's been there for, for this team for the last few years. You just that's why you brought him in. And um, he's, he's a top three goalie in this league. And um, he continues to show it. And we saw him play in the bubble with, with Vancouver and how good he was for them in that playoffs there. And um, I know he's probably been really eager to get started here in the playoffs, especially in front of the fans. And he brought it tonight. That's, uh, you know, he's just steady. He, he brings that calmness to your team. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, he's a big goalie. And, you know, he's uh, he's not a guy you want to play against, that's for sure. And, and yeah. I'm sure Dallas is, uh, saw that firsthand tonight. No question. And, and I think, believe it or not, this is the first uh, playoff game in the NHL he's played with in front of fans. So some experience, as you mentioned, in the bubble, obviously uh, got Vancouver into uh, the second round there. And um, I, I would assume a confidence builder for him as well. And hopefully uh, hear from Jacob Markstrom here following the, uh, the shutout victory. Uh, over the Dallas Stars, and, and now just kind of a thought on, uh, on on Erasmus Anderson and how you juggle things back there. I mean, I know you you go through these situations throughout the course of the regular season. You lose guys to injuries, whatever it might be, but um, not ideal when you don't have one of your top defering, uh, top pairing defensemen, and they still manage that pretty well on the back end, didn't they? Yeah, and, and you you hear this all the time. It's it's all about depth, you know. And, yeah. and the Flames have depth, and you you don't want to lose your, your one of your top defensemen, you know, for two periods and then play with five the rest of the way, but. You know, the guys stepped up. Um, they rolled 5D and um, and did a job. They they didn't give up much and, um, you know, and you, and you love to see this. I was just going to say, yeah, yeah, what about the, you know, the answer's a challenge. I mean, Klingberg yeah. came at him first, right? Exactly. It, it's You're not going to back down. And, and both teams had to had to deal with the 5D. It wasn't just yeah. the Flames. The Stars sure. had to, they lost Klingberg there. But, you know, it's a rule that's been in place for years. Second fight after a whistle, it's just, you know, the refs are going to, you know, kick you out. And, um, yeah, maybe wait till the next period and fight next time. I don't know what, it, but in the yeah. heat of the moment, that's going to happen. And, and you, you love that from, from Razzie sure. and, yeah. Um, yeah, and Hey, that's, uh, you know, it brought, it brought the juice and, and that's what the flames are all about. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a way to build uh, as a team here. We, uh, we asked, um, you know, a couple guys about it during the game, just about that physicality side of it. And, uh, you know, this team could probably play any which way you wanted. I think you kind of touched on that early. But, you know, when you answer physical challenges like that, when you answer, you know, guys, uh, you know, after whistles or whatever it might be, I mean, does that, is there any amount of tone setting when it comes to a playoff series? Or, you know, are those just kind of the games within the games? Yeah, it's just games within the games. And um, yeah. things happen uh, after the whistle sometimes. And, you know, they escalate. And at the end of the period, uh, you know, you see a big hit. And yeah. They want a response, and then it gets. It, it, it happens in every. You, you saw it in the Leafs, Tampa series yesterday. You saw it, you know, back in 2015 with us in Vancouver. It's just after the whistle, you know, the game within the game. Sometimes it escalates, and guys lose their temper. Yeah. The fans are going wild. It's uh, it's great. You know, it's the emotion of the game. That's that's why we love playoff hockey. Yeah. And it's unfortunate we lost, uh, you know, two of the top defensemen sure. for for each team in the game. But um, you know, that's uh, hey, the Flames won, so it <laughs> worked out. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, and. I guess two guys will have fresh legs come game number two as well. Um, all right, yeah, expecting to hear from uh, head coach Gerald Sutter here shortly as well, and uh, we'll get an update on that. Uh, playoffs, there's a few different uh, things that you have to take into account, some broadcaster interviews and uh, some other, uh, you know, opportunities that uh, aren't necessarily there for the regular season. But uh, Matthew Kachuk, let's just uh, shift over to him for a moment. Uh, obviously, he sets up the game-winning goal, the only goal in this hockey game. But, um, you know, it seemed like he, you know, you mentioned the hit. He kind of responds to a, a challenge as well. Uh, what did you make of 19 here tonight? And it kind of par for the course, it seems. 
Yeah, and you know it was great to see uh, you know him you know have, have an impact. You know he he, he always For has shift. an impact. Yeah, he always has an impact in most games. Um, but he, he's a guy who you know when we talk about games within the game, he's getting under guys' skin when people aren't realizing. He's throwing big hits. Obviously, we know his offensive upside and what he brings there. He had an assist tonight. Um, you know, it's unfortunate when, when he, you know, you lose him for the first five minutes of the second period and you get some power plays, but hey, just even at the end of the game, he goes out there and, and like he's come a long way. Like when he first came in the league, he wasn't playing in these roles. He's out there last minute, he's killing the clock in the ozone the last 20 minutes and, in a, you know, in a game one of the playoffs. So look at him and Johnny down there. It's, uh, you know, it's a big part of the game. You, you don't even give Dallas another, you know, another yeah. chance. No question. And, uh, Obviously huge as they finish it out and uh, and secure the victory and take a one nothing series lead. Let's get our first reaction on this post-game show. Head coach Daryl Sutter is standing by. Let's listen in on what he thought of tonight's win. Hey you guys. Coach, your thoughts on the opening game? It was uh, lots of energy in the building. I thought we had lots of energy. I think they weathered it in the first and came out in the second. And it was pretty even. With Matthew Kachuk getting involved with Raffles, is that something you'd rather not see? In no, I'd rather, I rather would see it. Like it? That was playoffs, Eric. I mean, got a little confrontation. How about Rasmus? Pardon? How about Rasmus? I didn't like the calls on that. Right? Usually, usually there's an instigator and then a. So, I mean, that's separate. That's that's second altercation. So that is what it is. You know the rule. There was, I haven't looked, but um, 6, 12, it's probably 12, so there's probably 23, 24 minutes of penalty kill by both teams. Well, I said it this morning, that's what, that's what we're seeing. Do you think your, your club, I guess, managed uh, that second period well with all the, the penalties? Yeah, like I did. We were down to 5D, and then we, one defenseman that kills a lot of penalties plays the power play. He's our best defenseman, so they take him out. So, yeah, we did. How did you feel about Chris Tanov and Noah Hannafin sort of taking up a lot of minutes? Well, it's the right side. They take up a lot of minutes. Noah can play lots of minutes. He's a, he can handle it, but the right side, when Rascal's out, he's the guy who takes up the same minutes as Noah, so... That becomes Tanny and Eric's minutes, which makes it hard. Those two played over five minutes shorthanded. Eric was close to that. What did you think about your defense specifically on the PK? I thought we were really good. I think our defensemen are, you know, Eric can play both sides of the penalty kill, which helps us. But then once Rascal's out, then you're back to lefty ready, and, and uh, Shillington doesn't kill. The sort of energy, like in the atmosphere that it was tonight, do you look for anything from your goalie to know that he's going to kind of maintain that composure you need from yeah, him? Big, big saves. I mean, there was at the end. Of, at the end, what were the shots? Not or after one or after two or you know. So a lot of their shots were uh, probably power play shots or uh, their D jumping up and play shots. Sorry. You just talked a little bit about Matthew Kachuk and all the ways he impacted this game. Yeah, it's a forceful player. That's, I would assume that's the kind of night you expect from him regularly in this time of year. Well, if we want to win another game, we won one nothing tonight. So if you want to win another one, then you have to expect that out of Matthew. But there's lots of guys that are going to have to ramp their level up. What about Elias Lindholm? He was not only did he score, but he was I think 15 and eight in the faceoff circle. Something really important. Our centerman, two righties, and. You know, Louis not a natural center, but he can take him. So you get the two, two righties and Lindholm and and uh, Cali. So I got to take draws. Do you feel like your your third period performance sort of sets a nice tone for for game two? Uh, it's one nothing playoff game. I mean, you want to dissect the game. I mean, it's one nothing. It's a playoff game. With the, I guess a minute and a half left after the Dallas timeout, you started the Crook line. Is that face-off or just because what you'd seen from that? that um, it was after the Dallas timeout when the Kelly was the face-off outside by our bench. Yeah. yeah. Did you just throw them out? I wonder if drawn back that way. The ice, uh, was the problem is they said it was too warm? I don't really know. I was worried there was no Zambonis or they I don't know what happened there. <laughs> but no one was complaining about the ice all night or it didn't seem to be an issue? I couldn't tell you. I mean, 
football that one. All good, everybody? Okay. Thank you very much. So there uh, is what Daryl Sutter was alluding to in terms of a little delay coming out of the second intermission. Uh, there was maybe uh, not 100% sure what the actual confirmation was, but there was a Zamboni issue, and uh, we're unable to put the proper flood down, so I had to do a little bit of a scrape. Um, that's kind of what was left there, but um, it did cause about a four or five minute delay, which we didn't even know was kind of really happening. And then thought, man, that intermission seemed like yeah. kind of went on a little bit. But um, regardless, so they'll uh, get that sorted out for game two. And um, it, or maybe just a thought on on, on Dallas, because uh, we've obviously dove in pretty deep here on well, what we saw from a Calgary Flames perspective. But you know, we got Miro Haskin in play in almost uh, 30 minutes on the other side, which is probably not uh, unlike what we see in the regular season. I think he's usually up around. 25 minutes plus, but um, you know, maybe just uh, from a from a Dallas perspective, how you kind of come out of a game on the opposite side of it. Yeah, well, they they weathered the storm early. Like that first period, that game could have got out of hand for Dallas pretty quickly, and yeah, um, you know, they find themselves down one nothing with a chance to to get back into it. So um, I think they were probably happy about that, and then they settled in, and there's the power plays and um, special teams battle in the second, and um, yeah, they had a few chances in the third, but. Um, for them, they, they want to probably come out a little stronger next game and establish yeah. a, a good start, a good first period. And, um, you know, in this environment with, with the Flames fans, it, that's going to be tough to do because the Flames are going to be jacked up. So it'll be interesting how they respond early early next game and, um, you know, how, how that game goes because you want to set the tone. Um, you know, the series is underway now. You're, you're down one nothing if you're Dallas. And um, you, you want to try and get something out of this uh, two-game set here in Calgary before you go home. So, um, yeah, they... Uh, yeah, they they settled in, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, they they got shut out, and yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and, and got badly outplayed in that first period. So, I think uh, you know they're going to want to have a have a response next game. Jake Ottinger makes his first uh, NHL playoff start, and uh, do you remember your what, what your first one was like? Uh, <laughs> you know, all the way back to uh, yeah, it was 04. Oh four. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, trying yeah. to trying to get uh, the nerves calmed down for for the first one. Yeah, and I wasn't a goalie. Yeah, I think it's a little true. more nerve wracking back true. there, especially mine was on home ice too. So yeah. um, he, he came into a hostile environment here in Calgary. The fans were absolutely buzzing here. Yeah. Uh, we felt the, the arena shaking here at the start. So um, yeah, he settled in though. I think he probably wants that goal back to the truth. There was not really a screen on there. It's a quick play off the face off um, shot. shot glove side. But after that, he settled in. He made some big saves and he gave his team a chance to win or, or to tie it up. Um, yeah. You know, I don't care, you know, uh, how you play as a goalie or what goalie you are. If you get no no run support yeah. and, and, and the other goalie is putting up a shutout, um, you know, you don't have much of a chance. But uh, he's going to build off this and, and the Flames got to keep going at him and, and, you know, getting in front of him, getting his uh, kitchen there. And, and I'm sure we'll see, uh, you know, certain players on the Flames do that. And because um, yeah. the Flames are going to want to score more than that one goal, too. Um, yeah. You take the win and, and both teams are going to. Uh, make adjustments, and it'll be interesting how, how game two starts. Yeah, well, the chess match. you got two veteran coaches, too, so uh, you know they're coming. It's just a matter of uh, what it looks like. Uh, let's go back inside the press room and hear from, uh, I believe it was Eric Branson and Elias Lindholm, your goal scorer, and then a guy that played uh, well, close to 23 minutes on the back end tonight for the Flames. No, I guess, first of all, talk about that uh, the emotion of that first period with the crowd and everything that was going on. No, it was fun. Uh, Crowd was uh, into it right away, and, and uh, obviously we had some good energy right away. I uh, thought the first 10 or 15 minutes we played played really well, and then uh, second and third, uh, two minute penalties. So, as you talked on the road trip, I don't remember exactly where about needing to be better on both sides of the special teams. Can you just speak to what uh, those units gave your team tonight? Yeah, to be honest with you, I, I didn't think uh, we had a lot of shots. We need more shots, and and uh, didn't have uh, a lot of looks. So, but uh, obviously nice to put one in, and, and I thought our PK played real well. How would you describe the feeling of playing almost five minutes just shorthanded? Uh, you want to play less than that, obviously. Playoffs. Um, it's a big area of focus. Staying away from. From penalties, and, and you know, we saw it last night with what was called and whatnot. And they're, they're, you know, they're calling it pretty tight in in, in all games. It's it hasn't really been one of those, um, you know, open doors to 
get away with some stuff. They're, they're calling games pretty tight, so we have to be aware of that and, and obviously uh, stay out of the box. Those are obviously hard minutes. Do you start to feel that in the third period after there had been, I think, five penalty kills at that point? Um, I mean, not, no, not tonight. It's, it's, it, we've been doing it for all season long and, and you know, myself for – long time in my career so you sort of very much used to it and, and you put a lot of preparation in your body eat well sleep well and and do all the training so that you're ready for that moment so no Eric, what does it do for your team when you see matthew go out there in the first first period and just hitting everything that moves fighting setting up a goal yeah yeah it was big it was big got uh, the crowd into it got us uh you know got the juices running in us and uh, you know i thought especially in that first uh, along with what was going on with Matthew and a number of other guys laying the body. There was, you know, we were methodical about what we were doing. We were clean. We were good through the neutral zone. And, and you know, we were we were pretty calm, cool, and collected. We had moments where we lost it. But, um, you know, event we didn't break. What was said sort of in first intermission when you guys realized Rasmus wasn't going to be back and everyone was kind of going to have to step up and take on a bigger role? Uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. You kind of know what's, what's going down at that point. You know that um, you're going to end up playing a little bit more. Uh, I, I think, I know Chris and I have both righties on, on, you know, on the penalty kill. We were, the only question we had was, what are we doing with the kill? Because we need to split two righties up. And instead of having two righties and two lefties, might as well split that one up. Was it nice that, I know it was a power play goal, but nice that you, Matthew, and Johnny can connect on a goal and kind of pick up right where you left off in the regular season so early in the playoffs? Yeah, it's always nice to, to help the team that way. But uh, yeah, overall, from from our side, I think we can play better. Uh, our line was it was not much going on out there. It was uh, it was a tight game. Both teams played good defensively, and and uh, so it was it was not a lot of going out there uh, going on out there. But uh, we find a way. What did you notice that Dallas was doing to try to take away time and space? Was it just kind of pushing that physical line? Was it just defensive awareness? Like, what were they doing? No, they play tight. I think uh, you know it's it's hard to get to the net and and obviously to get it boxing out and and uh, and their goalie uh, saw the puck a lot. So we need to get more bodies to the net and and create some more chaos. Elias, what did you uh, or what did you make? How would you describe maybe the atmosphere out there tonight, especially at the start? Oh, it was good. It was uh, it was fun. Even warm up was fun and and uh, uh, got got goosebumps. So it's uh, it was it was, it was fun. It gave me a lot of energy. So it's. That's good. Eric, go ahead. Bud. You guys obviously very comfortable in a one nothing game if that's what it's going to take for this series. Uh yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's going to be a tough series and, and very very good chance there's going to be more games like that that are they're one shot away and um, you know you have to be you have to you have to make plays and you know we talked about it we've said it a million times but we did it as a five man unit tonight and and you know didn't give them. You know that opportunity that they could they could score on, and, and obviously Marky played stellar. So maybe just expand on that if you don't mind. What did you see from Jacob as your goalie tonight? He was solid. He was really solid. Um, you know, there was moments in the game when he needed to be sticky, and, and he was sticky, and, and, and you know got a whistle for us. And um, I mean, we trust him. He's a great goaltender. So. Elias Adderla has talked a lot about the emphasis that he put on upping everyone's conditioning in the offseason. Is this maybe one of those games where you'd say that you would, you've seen that pay off? Yeah, I think uh, overall uh, we, we looked good. Uh, not, you know, we didn't have too many, uh, too many stretches where we played bad, I think, uh, during the regular season. I think uh, you know, we all came back in good shape uh, after summer and, and we're all ready to go and, and obviously you know, uh, we've been putting in the work during the season as well, so uh, it's just uh, it's just nice to get the first one. Thanks very much, guys. We're right back with Blake Coleman. All right, good to hear some thoughts from Erica Branson and Elias Lindholm there following the one nothing playoff victory over the Dallas Stars and uh, want to listen in briefly on what we'll hear from uh, the other side of things, and that is uh, the head coach of the Dallas Stars, Rick Bonus, who is meeting with the media to discuss uh, the losing side of uh, tonight's one nothing. Any idea 
you know, the first period, what was kind of the issue there? There wasn't an issue. We knew they were going to come out with that first 10 minutes, and uh, there was no surprises there. We, we knew we had to play through it. It's so unfortunate we took the penalty and they got that goal, but um, there was no surprises. We knew with 10 minutes, the crowd was behind them, their first playoff game, that they were going to come through. And so we, we played through it, and we bent a little, we didn't break, and then we got going. What did you your team when you got settled in? Fine. I mean, we, they, they thought they were going to run us out of the rink. And they didn't. And we put up a good fight. And uh, clearly, the power play's got to get clicking. That's a big issue for us. Getting more pucks on the net, a big issue. But to compete was there. The work ethic, everything was good. With the power play, how much is missing John right there? No, not really. I mean, you miss him, clearly. But it's up to the other guys to, to pick it up as well. Uh, well. I think there's too many power plays. We just got outworked. So whether John's on the ice or not, we're there. They, we let them outwork us on their penalty kill. Your, uh, your thoughts on what happened there at the end of the first period, just in general? I mean, obviously, John didn't know the rule. But... Yeah, <laughs> surprised at how long you've been in the league. You don't know that rule. But listen, again, they thought they were going to run us out of the rink, and I'm proud of our guys. We're going to stand up to everything they throw at us. We're going to stand up to them, and we're going to play through it. He's been good all year, but your youngster goaltender tonight, what did you Yeah, think? he was outstanding. So his first playoff start, like people forget this. Like, you know, he, he started the year in the minors. We had Bishop, we had Holtby, we had Udoba, none of those guys are around and now we're, we're going with Jake that's his first start and first first NHL start in a very tough rink against a very good team he did very well very happy for him very proud of him when you talk about getting shots on we call it the Ram 1500 limited but truth be told there's nothing limited about it Ram 1500 winner JD Power Award for best driver appeal All right, Flames post game live brought to you by your Alberta Ram dealers, uh, putting a wrap on a one nothing game one win for the Calgary Flames over the Dallas Stars alongside Matt Sage and Maple. We'll just close it out with, um, you know, I guess just uh, on the night, on the night itself, what this can do for a team as we've kind of discussed a little bit, but the opportunity to, to build on it. You've won the first one, that's a huge one. We know you've been through these playoff series and, and how crucial the first win is, but how does it, um, yeah, it's only one. You got yeah. still got to get four. Exactly, and and you're you're in the spot you want to be. You've played one game, you, you won it, and you keep home ice advantage, what you worked for all year, and now you get ready for the next one and try and get that next one on home ice. So, um, you know, you, you, you're you going to go back, everybody's going to watch game tape and make adjustments, but for the Flames, you know, you come out the same way next game, bring the energy, um, you know, that you brought and that the crowd brought and, and try and get another win. I think... Uh, you can't look too far ahead. Um, you look at your next next shift and, and, and get ready for that next game. And uh, we expect the atmosphere to be very much the same. Uh, appreciate you stopping by. This is uh, good, just like old times. <laughs> yeah, Back thanks for having me. me. Uh, that does it for our uh, game one coverage here of the Stanley Cup playoffs. The red lot filled up. Uh, Zidorov was ready to go tonight. And uh, so were the Calgary Flames. It was a one nothing victory. Jacob Markstrom gets the shutout. And uh, we're off and running in terms of the first round the Stanley Cup playoffs and look ahead to game number two, which goes right back here at the Scotiabank Saddledome. Another 8 p.m. start, exactly the way the head coach likes it. Uh, but he would have loved what he saw here tonight. And that is a uh, tight checking 1-0 victory for the Calgary Flames in a 1-0 series lead. Thanks for watching Flames TV, the post-game show brought to you by your Alberta Ram dealers. We'll see you back here on Thursday night.